My name is Cassie Dantzler, and I am a postdoctoral fellow in the Jagannathan Lab at Stanford. The title of my talk is Challenges and Opportunities in Malaria Vaccine Development. Malaria is a disease that has existed since at least 2700 BC that has dramatically influenced human history. Though deaths due to malaria have decreased in the last 10 years, close to 500,000 people, predominantly young children and pregnant women, still die from malaria each year. Even among children who recover, long-term neurological damage is common. In order to eradicate this devastating disease, new drugs and vaccines are urgently needed. However, the complex nature of both the malaria parasite and the human immune response pose challenges to therapeutic development. Of the five species of parasites that cause malaria in humans, all of which are spread by mosquitoes, Plasmodium falciparum is the most deadly. This parasite is most common in Sub-Saharan Africa and has a complicated life cycle in which various life stages present themselves differently to the human immune response. In terms of the human immune response, it is largely unknown what prevents naturally occurring immunity from being totally effective and why the same cells that kill parasites also cause symptomatic disease. Research on the diverse components of the human immune response is necessary for designing an effective vaccine for malaria. As has been highlighted in recent news around COVID-19, vaccines are essential tools to building population level immunity, reducing transmission, and ultimately eradicating disease. In the case of malaria, vaccine research has been ongoing since 1967, when scientists first showed that mice immunized with radiation attenuated plasmodium parasites were protected from malaria infection. Despite decades of research, the current leading vaccine candidate is the RTSS vaccine, which is only 30% effective with immunity waning after one year. This limited efficacy is because only children infected with parasites containing the exact same protein as in the vaccine are protected, while children whose infection contains a different form of the protein are not. Malaria parasites are complex organisms with over 5,000 genes corresponding to hundreds of potential new vaccine targets. Despite these challenges in vaccine development, resistance to drugs and insecticides and increasing disease in certain regions due to climate change make development of a vaccine an urgent priority. The World Health Organization has a strategic goal of developing a vaccine that is more than 75% effective and suitable for use in all malaria endemic regions by 2030. Such a vaccine would require protection lasting more than two years and booster doses required no more frequently than annually. An effective vaccine would dramatically reduce the public health burden of malaria. To reach this goal, we first need to better understand which aspects of the natural immune response contribute most to protection from disease. Like with COVID-19, not all responses that develop are protective. Among people living in malaria endemic regions, immunity is thought to develop in three phases with the youngest children experiencing severe disease and death, older children experiencing mild disease, and adults no longer getting sick, but still having parasites in their blood that transmit to other people. The immune response therefore is able to control parasites and reduce symptoms, but not completely eliminate the parasites. For many years, it was assumed that antibodies were the most important part of the immune response, but it is becoming clear that some antibodies are more protective than others and that various immune cells also play important roles in protection from disease. There are many open questions surrounding how these different components of the immune response interact and how their functions change following repeated malaria or other coexisting infections. In order to develop better tools to prevent and treat malaria, we need to better understand how natural immunity develops and what prevents total parasite elimination. In particular, it will be important to define roles for antibodies T cells, and other immune factors at different time points throughout an infection. Cohorts of children living in malaria endemic regions who are followed carefully over numerous transmission seasons are providing needed insight into the mechanisms driving natural immunity, including changes happening at the genetic, transcriptional, and epigenetic levels. Vaccine approaches based on a complex understanding of anti-malarial immunity are likely to be more effective than historic approaches 
which have focused on eliciting antibody responses and have had limited success. A vaccine that stimulates the immune system more broadly, for example, by targeting innate or T cell responses, or by modulating epigenetic changes in specific immune cells, could induce stronger and more long-lasting responses. Such an approach would ultimately enable us to fine-tune the immune response to eliminate parasites without causing inflammation and symptomatic disease. A vaccine for malaria would have a massive impact on public health, but gaps in our understanding of the immune response to malaria are a major challenge to vaccine development. Closing these gaps will be essential for designing an effective vaccine. My work will contribute to this effort by studying how immune cells from children experiencing malaria in Uganda change their response after repeated infection. I am using several cutting edge lab techniques to understand the underlying processes that drive altered immune cell function and hopefully adapt these processes to make natural immunity more effective at killing parasites long-term. This work will improve our understanding of the interaction between different arms of the immune system and could enable development of novel malaria vaccines inducing long-lasting immunity.